What's up guys, welcome to Voicey here, this is your host Captain Zach, and today's subreddit that is plagued with entitlements and unemployment alike, r slash I don't work your lady. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell to never miss an episode. This story's called, I'm Not Your Employee. So this happened a while ago, but I used to work for a seasonal goods store, basically the inventory varies depending on the time of the year, but I had to leave due to health issues. I like to shop there regularly because the prices are unbeatable, and if I'm lucky, one of my previous coworkers will apply their employee discount. Sometimes if I notice it's busy, I'll straighten the shelves a bit, but I won't be too serious with it, just adjust it so other shoppers can spot the products easier. It's a force of habit. Plus, I kinda do this in a lot of stores. I should also mention that the dress code for this store is pretty casual, like jeans and t-shirt kinda casual, plus an apron. Red, blue, or green depending on the department. So I'm wandering through the aisle, trying to find some decorations for my home when an older lady, who looked to be in her 50s, started to put random stuff in my cart. I recognized the manager on duty badge around her neck. I, however, did not recognize her, so she was more than likely hired after I left. Our exchange went like this. Um, excuse me, I'm using this cart? Yeah, and? You're putting things away anyway, can't you take care of these for me? I'm sorry, I don't work here. I'm here shopping. Don't give me that excuse, I saw you tidying up the shelf. Just put these back for me, I don't have time to argue. I have a phone call with corporate in a minute. Again, I don't work here. I'm not wearing a name tag and I am shopping. I also just like to straighten a shelf if it's looking janky cause it bugs me. Really, I see you here all the time. I'm pretty sure I've seen you in the break room a few times too. Stop lying and get to work. She drops the rest of the stuff in her arms into my cart. I'm getting kinda annoyed at this point because I've already explained twice that I'm not her employee. I let out a heavy breath, gathered up all of the stuff she dropped into my cart, into my arms. I looked at her dead in the eyes and just dropped the items into a nearby display bin. Her face covered in shock. She says, How dare you! I'll write you up for that! Since I've worked there previously, I know that she technically can't file a write-up. She has to speak to a store manager to file it. Okay, great! My name is Anna. Go ahead and call the store manager to file that write-up for you. See, I knew you were an employee. Only employees know that. She radios the store manager. Listen, Linda. I'm not your employee! I used to work here, but I'm not currently employed here. I'm calling BS. You're just saying that to get out of a write-up. Too late. Store manager is already on his way. Okay, great. Store manager finally arrives. I smile and wave at him. He's a really cool guy. And me and him work together all the time while I did work there. Hey, store manager. Can you please do me a favor and tell manager on duty here that I no longer work here and to stop harassing me about getting to work? Store manager looks confused and looks at manager on duty. Why are you telling her to get back to work when she doesn't work here? She's not even wearing the name tag or an apron. How could you confuse her for an employee? Well, I know I've seen her in the break room and she was organizing the products on the shelf. Manager on duty, she is no longer employed with us. Her picture is hanging up in the break room because she got employee of the month four months ago, which was her last month working here. Leave her alone. But... If I find out that you are harassing anyone else who is not in uniform, I will write you up. You and I both know you can't afford to have another write-up. He looks at me. Have a good night, Anna. Also, sorry about manager on duty. Use my employee discount when you check out. I'll let customer service know how to use it when you check out too. Managers get 30% off everything in store, including sale items. Regular employees only got 20% off non-sale items. Thank you so much, store manager. You have a good night, too. I finished my shopping and went to check out. I still shop there on an almost daily basis. And by the looks of it, manager on duty either quits or finally got that last write-up because I haven't seen her recently. 30% off everything, even sale items? Ooh. So, theoretically, if there was a 70% off sale and you used your manager's discount, you could get 100% off. Or they're like annoying terms and conditions because that's a pretty good deal. I mean, I wouldn't want to be a store manager. That's a lot of responsibility. <laughs> this story's called, I'm not an airport worker. I just play one at O'Hare. 
I posted this as a comment to another post, and after someone saying that not all submissions had to be dramatic, I figured I would just post my own story on its own. I was in the Chicago O'Hare Airport, getting there around 9 o'clock at night, and a bunch of flights had been cancelled there. I was flying from Omaha back home to Florida. Well, I finally got my flight home squared away, having to go through DC the next day. Screw me! And it was time to find a hotel for the night. At first, I was on hold with the airline while they looked for a hotel within my budget, which was actually very high since work was paying for this. And I was on the phone for at least 30 minutes or so while this guy was making calls to local hotels. After that, I was looking online myself and even on vacation rentals by owners. So I decided to sit in the closest seat I could find during this call in my search, which was located behind an information desk. And this was just a desk, a simple everyday office desk, not like one of those huge information circle desks built into the structure. I had my luggage right in front of me, so if people bothered to actually see me, they would know that I was a traveler just like them. I even started talking to two other ladies that took up camp on the desk in front of me, while they searched for hotels too. There was a sign on the desk that read, closed, but it was likely hard to see given the other people sitting on the desk. Anyway, I probably got at least a dozen times about where something was in the airport. Where was a good place to eat, if I knew of any hotels in the area, where were the overnight cots set up, etc. When the first person to come up to me asked me something, I figured they thought I worked at the desk, but I listened to their question in case I could actually help. Yeah, I couldn't. So, as time went on, I just kept telling people I was just traveling and didn't work for the airport or any airline. Not one person was rude or yelled at me, despite everyone being tired, frustrated, and likely hungry. After the first few people came up to me, I thought about moving somewhere else, but there honestly wasn't anywhere else to go. That place was packed with upset air travelers. The first time it happened, I was actually like, "Oh, maybe I'll have something to post on I don't work your lady. But no, all my encounters were normal and pleasant under the circumstances. For those interested, I actually ended up having to spend the night in O'Hare. I now call it the O'Hare Hotel. I met up with a lovely woman who ironically was headed to Omaha, where I had just come from, and a nice guy a few years older than me. We hunkered down in a long, very lit hallway for the night, after finding some cots, blankets, and pillows. The airport also hands out these little sundry bags, which was convenient. My airline tried to reroute me all over the East Coast to get me home. So, early in the AM, when they woke us up, we had to get up at like 5 o'clock when the airport officially opened, I booked another direct flight on a different airline for around 7 o'clock in the morning. I'm glad work was paying, so I was lucky to have that option. I know a lot of people were really stuck and at the mercy of the Chicago Air Gods. And this was June 2018, by the way, so not related to bad winter weather at all. Okay, I don't know why, but that title really made me hold back laughter for, like, half the story. <laughs> that's... Uh, <laughs> I don't know why. What is it? What is it that's funny about... I don't know. <laughs> this story's called, Got Mistaken for an Employee Twice in Tesco's. Luckily, no one tried to steal my Switch. The first one, I thought, finally, a story to tell on this sub. The second one made me rethink my outfit. So, backstory. I'm a vegan. Okay, next story. I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm a vegan and thought it would be interesting to make some what I eat in a day type videos for YouTube. I'm also sensitive to noise, so I wear giant noise canceling headphones when I leave the house. My country is also launching a program where if you wear a lanyard with sunflowers on it, they can tell you have an invisible disability and will offer you extra help when possible. So I'm filming all the vegan food I'm looking for, I'm wearing giant headphones, and I've got a lanyard. I'm wearing a fluffy white jumper that could be mistaken for a Christmas jumper, and supermarkets in the UK often let their staff wear Christmas jumpers in December, so maybe that's why my lack of a uniform wasn't taken into account. So I'm looking at the free from second and filming on my phone when I hear a woman asking what to do about an empty box. I stepped out of the way so she could talk to the actual employee and she gave me a funny look. Then she said, don't you work here? It looked like you were scanning stuff. As it dawned on her that she was just bothering some random person. So I had to explain that no, I just think people give a crap about my diet. She apologized and found an actual employee. 
A pretty normal interaction, really. No screaming, no demanding to speak to my manager, no stealing my game consoles. The second one was at the checkouts. I was just hovering, in my own world, when a woman turned to me and said, Do you work here? I was shocked it had happened again. The woman said she saw I had a lanyard and thought my headphones were connected to all the checkouts, and I would give orders through them. I'd been promoted to some kind of hypothetical management position. The woman said that maybe I should work there. Maybe I should. Then I could afford a switch and make these stories a little more juicy. <laughs> okay, first of all, that program is really cool. The whole sunflower lanyard, I, I actually really, really like that. I feel like more countries should do that because honestly, that's like really thoughtful and creative. This story's called, I don't work here, but I guess I can help. So, a little background. I used to work at a Source Electronics store in Montreal a few years ago, 2012. Next door was an EB Games or GameStop location. My friends and I worked at these locations. One afternoon during the summer months, I decided to browse the PS3 games at the EB next door on my break. The scenario is completely ridiculous, but hilarious enough that I still recall it in vivid detail. I'll set the stage. My manager, we'll call him Dave, my friend at EB, we'll call Sam, and his manager, we'll call him Crappy Manager, are in this day. Hey Dave, uh, I'm gonna check out the new titles on PS3 before I go get lunch. Uh, want a coffee? Sure man, just be back in 30. Yeah, no problem. I head out and hang a quick left toward the EB door. As I walk in, I see two older ladies, who we'll call Lady 1 and Lady 2, probably in their 60s or 70s, dealing with crappy manager. I nod at him just to make sure he knows I'm there. He almost always has an attitude problem, so I like to make him aware that I'm a witness to his shenanigans. I hang out within earshot just to make sure he isn't being a complete tool to these sweet old ladies. I have some questions about games for kids age 10 and up, and I want to ask about your promotions this week. Crappy manager looks aggravated and notices that I'm keeping tabs on him. He turns and scowls in my direction. Ask him. He knows whatever you're asking. He growls and then walks away from his customers and takes a break in the store's office. I give Sam a look of disbelief, but he just shrugs and continues dealing with his own customer. I turn to these ladies, who have been patiently waiting with looks of disbelief on their faces and put on my best retail smile and attitude. Sorry about him, ladies. He's special. Now, I don't work here, but I am a huge nerd, so ask me anything. I can probably help you. They start asking about games for kids, Skylanders was popular back then, and peripherals. I got them set up with a PS3 bundle, a spare controller, a box set of Skylanders on top of the bundle, the promo gave them one for free on top, and got Sam to give them a full complement of additional insurance, free of charge because of crappy manager's shockingly belligerent attitude. Not only that, but Sam called his district manager, who came to personally give me a check for commission, explained further down. It turns out both these ladies are the grandmothers of the same grandchildren, so it made sense as to why they were only buying one console. Sadly, this took up most of my lunch break, so I just got Dave and myself our usual coffees, and walked back into the source just in time to see crappy manager who eyed me angrily. What the hell's wrong with you? Huh? Watch this about you making a sale in his store. I explain what happened. <laughs> crappy manager, you moron. You told them that he could help them. That's your own fault, you tool. Whatever, I'm keeping the commission. Like hell you are, Sam made the sale. Let me remind you that I can and will be a witness if you try to screw your employees. Screw you, you're just a nobody who never buys anything from us. Oh, like that PS3 I didn't buy? Or the 15 some odd games I left the store with over the last four months? Try again, butthole. Thankfully, our store was dead. Usually, EB was too. The three customers in the store were the only ones they had all day. This let me get away with slamming this guy's attitude into the ground. Screw you, you're banned from my store. No one insults me. I burst out laughing, and this confuses him. <laughs> you realize I'm one of your best customers. Your district manager will definitely make you overturn that stupid decision. <laughs> we argue a bit, and then he leaves. 
Dave and I stare at each other in amazement at how ballsy this guy is. The next day, a well-dressed guy walks into our store and asks for me by name. I present myself and put on my usual retail demeanor. Hi, I'm OP. How can I assist you today? The guy looks me over and assesses me. It made me kind of nervous. He then introduces himself. I'm district manager, and the EB next door is part of my district. I'm a little taken aback. Why would the district manager come to personally see me? He explains that the numb nuts next door, crappy manager, has been angering customers for months, to the point that they're boycotting the store. He told me about the call from Sam and handed me a check for my well-earned commission and said, I wish we had more guys like you working in our stores. I intercepted the positive commentary from those customers who said you were really helpful and wished you were an actual employee at that store. I'm standing there in a daze, a little stunned and a little humbled. I tell him it was really nothing. I couldn't just leave them there when crappy manager put me on the spot. I felt compelled to assist. Damn my retail habits. We have a good laugh and district manager tells David, don't you let this one go. Also, we'll be reprimanding crappy manager for his horrible conduct. This brought a smirk of victory to my face as I shook this guy's hand. That was easily the best two days of my retail career. Okay, that was quite the wholesome ending. I enjoyed it. And I also have a question. Is EB Games literally Canadian GameStop? Like they just changed the name, kind of like how uh, Carl's Jr. is called Hardee's in certain parts of the country? Or is EB Games like a Canadian GameStop ripoff? Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell to never miss an episode.